Oh wow. Oh, oh. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> the golden arches. We've arrived. <laughs> oh god. Yay. Another turny turn. Yeah. In me mom's car. It's like, are we about to? <laughs> Oi. So Let's so see so if I can like, catch on the, left. the lineup of cars going past us. Yeah, literally. Go, 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was only one. Oh no, there's more. There's more of them. <laughs> wow. I just popped. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> Our favorite place. That's such a cinematic shot. Your zoom is so good. Whoa. Oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Crying. I'm glossing up. You're gonna recap the mic situation. Yeah. Look. So, so the fans can be sad about it too. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> so. The fans ordered my mic on Amazon. It was supposed to come yesterday. It's now two to three days late. So sad. So, so basically, hi. Here today with Ak. <laughs> Ak <laughs> well, you should like, I should get out and then dramatically come I'll in. go, get out. <laughs> Bye. You can't say shit like that and not commit. I'm so committed. All right. Hi guys, today, entering my car along with my Macca's fries is Keisha Bay! Woo! Case letters. <laughs> she was never here before. We are at YouTube.com. <laughs> YouTube.com <laughs> slash watch. Is that what it is? Today, we're going through the Goodreads. We are doing 2022 reading wrap up. Every book we read. Every book we read. One sentence synopsis of each book. Yeah. Our rating, mild discussion. Mild discussion, I love it. Mm. Love a mild discussion. Yeah. How many books did you read in 2022? Well, should we start with our goals first? Uh, well, that's a bit yeah. disappointing, isn't it? I read 39 books in 2022. <laughs> My goal was 30, but then halfway through the year, I upped it to 40, and the fact that I only had one left over actually makes me want to cry. Mm. You this literally year. achieved your goal and more. I read. 48 books and my goal was 50. I'm so, so true. Anyway. Oh well. Oh well. Follow Keisha on Goodreads. TBH, Please follow me on Goodreads. To my 18 subscribers. It is. It is. Follow me on Goodreads. So at true. Ken's underscore LZ as he's on everything. Hear my angry reviews. We only read four of the same books this year. Which is abysmal. Mm. This year. Last year. <laughs> four of them. Wait. <laughs> Two of them were for school and one was a body read. So. Yeah. We suck. But you're getting variety here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Venn diagram are almost two separate circles. Yeah. But it's like the this tiniest year, we're gonna make like it a sure. bit more like a. It's gonna become a Venn diagram. It's so true. So we're gonna speed run school books mm -hmm. while I munch on my unsalted. Yeah, I don't have no salt on these fucking chips. Well, we both read The Great Gatsby mm. by F. Scott Fitzgerald. What were your thoughts on that? Well, my rating was two stars. Mine Did was I? two point five. I thought it was pretty. Do I think it's a little bit overhyped? Yeah, but you know what? So overhyped. It was red. It was red. It made me angry. Fam. Is that the point? I think it made me angry in a way that it wasn't supposed to be the point. Next school book we read, The Glass Menagerie. I like that more than Gatsby. <laughs> I enjoyed it actually. Mm. I also gave it 2.5, but I had more thoughts on it. I have my mini review. Mini review says, you know, something's wrong when Amanda is your favorite character out of the lot. That was my best essay of the year. Really? Yeah. Tennessee Williams did it. I gave it three stars. Fair, fair. Because I kind of vibed with the whole mum controlling aspect. I don't know. Oh, I wonder wow. why. <laughs> Sorry. But I... Oh, oh it's going to come into shock. Ah. Whoa. There she goes. Next for my school books, I'm going to speed oh, around these. Yeah, you, these are, those were the only two school books I read, so go. Yeah. First school book I actually read this year was The Odyssey by Homer. It was like the standard penguin classics edition. And I hated that translation. I hated the translation so much. There are better translations out there. Like it just got rid of the poetry of the entire text. It made my eyeballs dry. I hated it. But as a story, as like a three star, mm. the translation, I'd give it like a 1.5 or two star. Oof. Yeah. As a classics girly. Oh, actually there's another school book Go. we read together. The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I didn't actually read it. Oh, <laughs> take it back. I read The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I didn't read it. I gave it three stars, and my review is, I am well learned in arithmetic. <laughs> I read The Histories, which is like Herodotus, The Histories, I gave it three stars. I needed this for my ancient external, and I read all eight books, and it was, it was in the eighth book. And I got two sentences worth of evidence for my essay. Any I other school books? I gave four stars to Medea, because I support women's rungs. I gave 3.5 for the three Theban plays, and that's only for Antigone, because I hated Oedipus Rex. 
Yeah, that is all my school books. 10 out of 10. You've clearly been a student and I have it. Right, I also read Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. And I by, will- <laughs> by William Shakespeare. <laughs> I gave that four stars because I'm a slut for that book. You are a slut for that book and any retelling ever. Mm-hmm. I kiss Shara Wheeler. I gave it. It's loading. I gave it 4.5 stars. I Yum. ate it up. Synopsis. No spoilers. I haven't read it yet. It okay. is on my TBR. ASMR synopsis. Girl at school. Hashtag I'm not like other girls quirk. Wow. Whoa. Mortal enemy only because academic rival. Perfect Char Wheeler. Oh. Who are these bitches who I don't really know who like have this personality that I think they I know that and then they aren't that. Whoa. Shara Wheeler leaving notes because she's a little petty bitch discovering mystery. You're gonna want to read all of Keisha's books. I think it was really fucking fun. I think it did really important things for YA. The cover's stunning. The cover is stunning. I want to The whole um, note leaving thing wasn't my favorite part, but I still ate it all. Pretend this is a little label yeah, mic and then like. just imagine it. The first book I read this year was Once Upon a Broken Heart. I gave it a, a four-star rating and no review apparently because I didn't start reviewing books until like a third into the year. Really? Which is crazy. I thought you were um, a Goodreads review veteran. No. Wow. I'm new to this gig. <laughs> it is basically a spin off series of the Caraval series, also by Stephanie Garber. And the her world building is just so whimsical and magical, but like in a way that like packs so much angst. I can feel me so... not out of love with the decimal. <laughs> Jax is hot, so I had to read it. <laughs> so true. One day I'll be a good read. Like, one day we'll have label back. <laughs> Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> Synopsis of this book is girl lives and does zero thoughts. Weird kinky shit happens that's kind of not consensual or vibey. And then there's no plot. And then I think someone went and bought fruit. <laughs> There was a dinner party. It's Sally Rooney being pretentious as fuck. Somehow, I gave it three stars because, look, I do enjoy Sally Rooney's writing, but I'd love to read a letter, a PowerPoint, a small bite-sized comment, not a book by her. Yeah, you know what? That's so fair. I think it's problematic. Got a chip stuck my throat. Whoa. (laughs) That was disgusting. I hope we got close-up ears more of that. Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. This was kind of a random one mm. for me. I, w- I just saw it. I like the cover. I like the synopsis. No? Yeah. The synopsis being um, in this world every month, I think it is, in every village in this little continent, one person's, while they're sleeping, their dream will like come to life, but it's always a nightmare. And then so Ooh. you have these like people who work there and they have to fix the nightmare that's going on on the streets outside. I've heard about this book. It was like an oh, yeah. unexpected sleigh. I had a fabulous oh, time. Ready? I rated it four stars. It was very much cozy fantasy mm. and nothing like what I expected. And it was fun. You're so much more succinct than me, fuck. Matrix by Lauren Groff. I gave it three stars. It was a really cool, like, I guess sapphic coming of age follows this one girl through time Ooh. in a long time ago. She, like, becomes a nun and shit. And it's all of the... It's really kind of cool in the exploring the power dynamics. Like, bitches could analyze this shit. The ending got me. The whole thing was a bit of a drag. Like, I had to force myself to read it. So it wasn't entirely my vibe in the way it was written and everything. So I'll add that to my TBR. Oh, the next book I read this year was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and I gave this five stars. It is so well done for like a little YA murder mystery. Um, it just encapsulated the genre, I think. Like, everyone knows this book. The genre. It's, it's, it's the YA murder mystery, let's be um, real. See, I um, feel like you started writing reviews when I actually got good reads. Yeah, I think so. That's why like, because I was like, in a mess because, because I before that, I had like what, two followers? <laughs> oh, so you were only writing reviews for your followers, I see. <laughs> it's about, what's her name? Pip? Pippa Fitz, whatever. I don't remember her name. And she's doing her little research project on an unsolved mystery in her little town. Um, and there's twists and turns and it's like family drama, but also like high school drama, but also like corrupt authority forces. Ooh. So yeah. Is it an easy read? It is. Yes, I, I kind of read, read it. it. I sat down and I read it all in a day. My next book is My Inner Sky, dot, dot, on embracing day, night, and all the times in between by Murray Andrew. Yeah, this four stars. I'm fucking in love with this book. Are you actually serious? Who is going to be like, it's dirty up here, sweep the leaves? Speedy review. I love this book. 
it found me at the right time at the start of a new year. I believe that books that find you at the right time, they're just they're just something else. Mm. This was like stories from her life, but also it fit in like it was sectioned into day, night, like sunrise, day, mm. night. It was like her little doodles, like it was like watercolor shit. It was so whimsical. It was gorgeous. And I'm going to read her other book on how to be an adult. Oh. When I around when oh. I turn eighteen, because I yeah. feel like she is a centering force in her art style, a creative and slay concept. We went from some real profound literature to Lukov with Love by <laughs> Mariana Zapata, and you know what? I enjoyed Let it. Me see the cover. <laughs> Um, enlighten us as to what that was about. It wasn't really even enemies to lovers. It was like rivals to lovers, but like figure skating. <laughs> so, so I ate it. Oh, oh, you would like, The slow burn was really well done. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. <laughs> it was really very much the this is me trying complex. Play that by Taylor Swift mm. over the top of this, please. <laughs> yeah, that. But it, like in a book and with figure skating and hot people and a romance so wow. how do you know they're hot you made them hot yeah <laughs> did i say i gave it four stars yeah i gave it four stars next book for me you'll get through this night by daniel howe <laughs> main man put out a book i have to read it it was about mental health do a fame plug right now honestly i met him yesterday so it was good i gave it three stars it was like so 100 percent necessary and it was all things i made me realize that i have had the privilege of learning many of things that this man did not get to learn until his studies you know mm. so he really wrapped it up fucking nicely in terms of like little starter pack of starter mental pack. wellness like he did i'm impressed it was not useful to me in any way but i enjoyed his little internal dialogue and that's that. I'm munching on my fries. But I need my water bottle so I can sip so we can go for a rummage. Thanks. Thanks, babe. Your big egg. <laughs> it's my big egg. Fury Born by Claire Legrand. And this is about the time where I realised I actually can no longer read, like, epic fantasy books anymore. And it made me so upset. Aww. I gave it three stars. And that's quite literally because I was just did not have the brain power to get through the world building. Like, I had no clue what was going on. Aww. But I loved the vibes. Okay. I enjoyed the characters. And I do want to sit down and actually read the whole series again i'll reread the first book and then just go through because i feel like i would enjoy it mm. i just couldn't at the time i couldn't even tell you what it was about like i can't synopsis this for you <laughs> first oh. five sorry oh. Oh. honey bee by craig silby ah! this book cover to way it was written to story it was telling to characters to fucking i don't know curtain descriptions Kind of that's not even relevant just like some minute detail this book had me in a chokehold i have never balled harder maybe when i finished the book thief but oh. tears this book is so stunningly beautiful who does it follow it follows oh i can't spoil it follows actually not sam but sam it's a little coming of age it's really kind of sad we've got some family drug addiction going on but we have some powerful personal growth and we have the most beautiful story of friendship i've ever found um sam meets this guy um, called Vic on the, old man? on the old man on a bridge when they are both about to and Craig Sylvie is fucking onto something something about Craig Sylvie writing stories that I don't know if he actually has the license to write but he does them well and I think he does people a service cool I think I love him everyone needs to read this book it is on my TBR Aussie classic as per usual with Craig Sylvie my next book is also my first five star read <gasps> Of 2022, I read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And like we all know, I would read anything that this woman puts out. It follows Alex as she is indoctrinated into Yale. Indoctrinated? She's like yoinked into Yale. She gets like a free ride into Yale. But she has to be like part of their secret society where they take care of all the other secret societies. But then this murder starts happening and there's like some demonic rituals and like shit going around. There's like, it's very culty. Wow. And it's like her job is to take care of all these cults basically. Mm. But like all the secret societies of Yale. All the characters are just really cool and I had a great time. Darlington slays. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, I get yeah, five stars. Five stars? Five stars. Five stars. Okay. I read the second book in the Brown Sisters trilogy, third. Danny Brown was last. I read her second. It's okay. Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert is the queen of romance. No one can change my mind. I've never read romance and smart written better than Talia Hibbert. Have I indulged in that much smart? No. <laughs> However, 
because of Talia Hibbert, I will be doing so. I gave it 4.5 stars and I think it was my favorite of the three, but I need to reread Chloe Brown to confirm this. It's Eve Brown. She's a mess. She can't hold a job. She does everything and then gets scared and then ditches it. But well. she doesn't actually have something she cares about. Then, oof, she bumps into another autistic bitch and is like, what the fuck's your problem? And actually runs him over with a car by accident, to Sorry. be honest. <laughs> mm, that's like the opening. Shit just happens and it mm, melts my little heart every time. The entire trilogy is also on my TBR. It's so fun! It's just, I never have more of a fun time. Like I'm talking needing to put the book down and scream. It's okay, just so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, it is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is my second Margaret Rogerson book. I read A Sorcery of Thorns first and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And this. so when I found out that Margaret Rogerson had a book before that, I was like, perf, slay. I'm gonna read it. Um, except I actually read it when I had a ridiculous cold. I remember oh. nothing from it except that I was bored and I couldn't sit through it, but I did. Um, and it was a two stars. Uh, Oof. Take this with a grain of salt because if I read it again now, I probably might enjoy it more. Amidst the delirium. It clearly wasn't amazing. It was not happening. I don't even know what it's about. Okay. Oh, some girl paints some guy, like some fairy prince, and then she like paints him wrong or some shit. I don't know. I'm sweating. Are you sweating? No, because I just took my thing off. My next book, I'm embarrassed. Anywhere the wind blows by Rainbow Row. Oh. Carrying yeah. this book around was shockingly embarrassing <laughs> because of the covers. However, 4.5 stars. <laughs> it's true. It was it's the true. it's the best of all of them. Because the first one, we get it. It's slayed, but it's been done before. We yeah. know. The second one is like, uh, depression, okay. The third one. Mm-mm-mm. Shit is tested. What is the synopsis? I think they're on the road trip. Simon, depressed. Vaz, what the fuck is wrong with you? That's the whole thing. Their romance. <clears throat> Shepherd. <clears throat> it stops shit. recording on us. For what reason? Don't know. There are people walking in front of the car right now. I'm narrating this for the viewers at home. They're really windy point pointing wind looking at the point winds. <laughs> I was talking okay. about Anywhere the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. 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 Rowell, I don't know. Rowell. Wow. <laughs> they were both giving out what they wanted to receive and then they finally fucking listened to each other and it was like and I had way 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 too much fun and it was a 4.5 star read but we love healthy communication we love healthy communication and I was frothing at the mouth over it I'm getting situated Rhea Slane it should just not wonk but it does wonk that's okay you know what it's giving it's got character to it no it's got sadness because I'm gonna do science right now yeah, that's good oh perfect that's good that's better than it was. Okay. Okay, perfect. The next book I read in 2020 to 2020. <laughs> probably the book talk book of book talk ever was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave it a four star rating. It's on my TBR. I enjoyed it. The vibes were immaculate. Ooh. We love Golden Age Hollywood slays. Was it a bit dragging at certain points? Yeah. Like you don't really get the point until the very end. You know, and then everything mm. makes sense. And I enjoyed that. But like at some points, I'm kind of just like, can we like you get there? move this along? It's like, because it's the only sapphic book recommendation I, I, I ever see on TikTok or Instagram. So mm. I think that's a bit of an ish. It is recording. I'm scared now. <laughs> Boyfriend material by Alexis Hall. They're also embarrassing to carry around. We have the fake dating trope. Oh, we love that. Yeah. It's kind of cute. It's good. Like I get it, but I'm also like... Sometimes I can't be bothered reading about emotional unavailability because I'm like, I get it, just communicate. And that is my red flag. Just communicate! <laughs> yeah, it was a fun read. I gave it four stars. In hindsight, Perfect. I haven't thought about it since. So I don't know if it deserves, it, if the four stars are warranted. Mm. But Would you read the second one? It was fun. I will be reading the second okay. one because there's husband yeah. material. It's just oh, extremely, upgrade. yeah, literally. <laughs> it's so embarrassing to carry around. Like, look at that cover. I, I have seen that it's cover. It's disgusting. It's so shockingly bad. The Tetris thing that's happening with it. No, because it's the flag colours. Oh! Yeah. She gets Union it. Union Jack! I don't really fully understand Alexis Hall and her male romances. It's one of those. You know how there's so many female mm. authors who write MLM yeah. romance? Issues. Anyway, you. I was going to say something, but I was like, it's going on the internet and I can't name names. I can bleep the names. It's gonna you know how I was gonna say how you started writing reviews before, like before? I was yeah. like, I was about to say to you, that you didn't have to explain it to me every time you could just tell her to read your Goodreads. You didn't have to have a conversation. No. <laughs> the next book I read was another Slay Five Stars Wait, can actually. We wait for this vehicle? Yeah, I just heard it rumbling and I was like, maybe I'll pause. 
Look, I'm judging their driving, but I also can't drive, so I have no opinions. But you have opinions. I have opinions. Next book I read was a five-star read, oh! and it made it onto my, like, required reading <gasps> favourite best books, okay, like, little categories. And it is none other than If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Um, I also read this book, so I will talk about yes, it Yes, please. Can we can go, discuss? I think it was established before this that I am an absolute whore for Shakespeare. So I had a great time with this. I was annotating it and I like did little tabs when like every single the time quotes, they had the yeah. quotes and like the dialogue. I was like, this is from this, this is from that. Um, so I just had a great time picking it apart. Synopsis. Uh, synopsis. It is about seven. There's seven of them, right? Yeah, there's seven students who go to the Delature. Delature? The way I was reading is the de Keller for the entire time. You know I read the entire seven Harry Potter book. Harry Potter. <laughs> I read the entire seven Harry Potter books and read Prefect as perfect. <laughs> the head perfect. So, Every time. Because <laughs> they're perfect. Is it more what you gotta read? I, I say delish. Just so true. I say so delish, but that could Dichella. also be wrong. Dichella. Um Arts Conservatory, where they do little all the artsy stuff. But this specific group of students are in their Shakespeare course, and they just sit there and they do Shakespeare plays for like what four years because they're in college, mm. and then they're really close, like incestuously close. Like it's you know you know drama students. Yeah, and drama living students. In each other's pockets. Yeah, I'm it was helping. that until. Drama happens literally off stage. Ooh. Ooh. One of them ends up dead, dead. And it's the murder mystery that unravels. But it's pretty cool because it's told mm. in hindsight of one of them who took the blame for it and got jailed in hindsight of the whole event. Yeah. And, like, the whole thing is just, like, unreliable, unreliable narrators. The entire time. I actually think all of us should be locked up. <laughs> yeah, I don't like him. He's a bit of a sexist cow. Yeah. A homosexual, so I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Please I do. did not enjoy it nearly as much as Keisha because I'm not a Shakespeare slay. I actually think I only and I enjoyed it that much because I'm a pretentious whore. I don't think you're a pretentious whore. I think you vibe when things are done sophisticatedly. Wait, three stars? Was it a dead three? <gasps> Am I gonna have to just own you right? I'm out of the car. No, no, because to begin oh, my oh. in depth review, I praise this book for being pretentious successfully. Okay, I'll take so there that. Is that. I accept it. I do need to reiterate, if I knew more of his plays, this book would have hit more. I had issues, but the book is very smart. And I had fun while I was reading it. It just like, I was like, yeah, that was good. And then I was done. Little side note on how much I love this book. Like little, the way it's like structured and the way it's written, I actually... It's genius. It's like absolutely, like it's Shakespeare really tragedy smart. structure blew my brain. I was like, you know what? This is so smart. And I feel so, it was such an ego boost to sit there and be like, I get what's going on. Yeah. I get what she's doing. Yeah. Then I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I gave this book three stars. It might have been a 3.5. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Actually 3.5. So is this the one I read the smart from or was this the other one? It might have been. It was really good and really fun. I really enjoyed Danny going from I'm an independent woman who just wants to hook up to Sorry. I'm actually hashtag in love. Oh. It was stupid, it was dumb, it was cute. <laughs> I can see in my eyes her being carried out in Zaf's arms. So, out of a fake execution, execution, evacuation. Execution! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's dying? Synopsis Danny, hashtag hookup gal. Security guard Zaf, hashtag so oh, stoic. And stoic. she works there and was always like, hey, here's your coffee. And they're oh. like, and he has such a blinding crush on her. And she doesn't notice for such an absurdly long amount of time. I will have to read. Down Comes the Night by Alison Saf. Four stars. I only mildly remember the plot, but I remember the vibes and the atmosphere and the way everything was written, like uh, being so gorgeous. Ooh. It was like gothic slay, but also in a fantasy like right. war going on in the background way oh right it was like really really well done there is a healer this healer is like I, I think she's like the niece of the new queen because her mom died or whatever she does like she does something wrong in like the first chapter of the book she like fucks up really badly and so she's kind of just like oh, i need to redeem myself and then redemption arc she goes and she heals the enemies whatever like one of the enemies general like he's like really ill and so she's like, I'm going to go be stuck in this crumbling old gothic mansion, heal this man, redeem myself, and then get out. Because there's, like, some fishy political shit going on in the background, and I'm going to, like, ferret this information to the queen so that she'll like me again. Wow. Um, and so she ends up Angsty. falling in love, and it's, like... Oh, really... romance, too! It's the, the romance is so good. 
<laughs> Alice in Soft Romance might be like my favorite happy ending romance. Wow. You know? Yeah. One last stop by Casey McQuiston. I gave this book four stars. I quite literally read it in a day. Like, it was one of those books, like, you get it, could not put it down. I was like, I actually need more. I can't function. Yep. Girl sees girl on train. Oh, my God, you're so cute. Other girl is actually stuck on train from the 70s and just it's weird and mythical and whatever the fuck <laughs> look it. it's kind of it's dumb it didn't really do it for me in terms of the whole like magical realismness. Mm. it was cute and it was done well but i was just like okay what did it for me what got the four stars was the side characters in this book because their romance nowhere what? near as good as wes in his little stupid hole of a room and what is i've forgotten the name of the other one but he's my favorite. It's like Peter or some bullshit. Be real. <gasps> Seriously? Wes and the other one. <laughs> Their whole romance was better than anything else going on in this book. And the vibes of this book. The little pancake place. The little after Ooh. hours work. Oh. The little Wes putting up a fucking... Not Wes. The other other one. There's a couple already. I'm so sorry. The little advertisement for a queer friendly roommate, that got me. On a cra trash oh. can, the vibes are good. The train sex scene was a choice. There was a decision that was made. I have not read it, I'm keeping judgments to myself. Where, she couldn't get off the train, so fair enough. Oh! Like that. <laughs> <laughs> the Shadows Between Us Sorry. by Sorry. Tricia Levenseller. And I know that I'm about to be cancelled right now because all of the bookstore girlies love this shit. And I'm here to tell you that it fucking sucked. So hard. I gave it a 2.5 because I was nice, but that in hindsight, nice. I'm giving it a 2. Lot. Basically, some bitch killed a guy back in her day, and she's like supposed to be this badass, like oh, sexual freedom, which is like, yeah, so slay, right? She's supposed to be badass sexual freedom. <laughs> she's just like, okay, so. I don't even know why. I, I, I don't remember why. Like, I'm sure there was a reason. Thank you for my eclipse. Eclipse haul. But she basically was just like, okay, I have to marry the prince because there's a ball coming up. And so, like, she goes to this ball. All these girls are, like, in court and whatever. And she's, like, near to court. And she's, like, trying to make this guy fall in love with her. Anyways, the, my issue, the world building. Number one, it was, like, sometimes written in, like, a Dark Ages vibes. Like, almost medievally. And then other times it was, like, 1700s Versailles. But, like, then they had, like, electricity. What was going on? I was confused. I do feel like I'm being very harsh, but I just did not like it. No, fair enough. Um, it was, like, so hyped up. It's, like, badass bitch and, like, court politics and, like, intrigue and shit. But it was just her running around in, like, pretty dresses. And the amount of descriptions this author put into the dresses, which there's nothing wrong with that. I love a good description of a pretty dress. But can we put that, maybe, the same energy into the plot all characters vibes, no plot it was all vibes as history and no plot and then marketed as like enemies to lovers court intrigue and oh. i was like it was not giving so it was like really weirdly classist but like not intentionally like it just Ugh. yeah bad bad the plot of this was that this was her like sexual freedom manifesto but like you should have just focused on that then. and it's in title it's too. incoherent because the book was incoherent oh! i reckon this is one of the first books i read of the year it's in a weird order because i got goodreads only halfway through the year little weirds by jenny slate i gave it five stars i'm trying to remember what i thought basically women i love them oh reading some women's perspectives was mm. lovely jenny slate's brain is genius it was like a collection of I guess little shorts about her own life and shit and some just oh, random cute. poetic takes on shit. The use of like words that like I never thought to use words in this way and it like made me as a reader almost uncomfortable with how like childlike the use of all of these words were. But it was like so oh, human and like it made me feel wonderful and disgusting in the most profound, wow. beautiful way. I need to read it again. That's that. Do you want to buddy read it with me? Because it is also I, on my TV. I will, I will do that. I will okay. annotate it. I need to purchase it first. Some Mistakes Were Made by Kristen Dwyer. I think that's how you say this author's last name. I gave it a four star rating. Ooh. It was four stars, but it was a 3.5 actually star, okay. you know? Told in like two timelines. And it's love <laughs> we love those. So this girl who was very close with this one family because she was not very well off, but like they sort of semi adopted her because no one else was taking care of her. Mm -hmm. um, 
it was like very sweet and it was a lot of just like coming of age but then also through the lens of heartbreak which was very Ooh. like intricately done mm. it was a romance but it didn't read like a romance book you know right find me by andre Osman. <laughs> Sorry. Cackling is the only fucking response because I wasn't laughing when I had to sit through this. I need to get up my notes. Oh my! Have I been waiting to talk about this book? <laughs> it was so bad. I gave it one star. A comprehensive list of everything wrong with this book. One, incest. <laughs> I'm not doing numbers because there's too many. The age gap. In every book, it's not just Queen by your name. No, 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 no. All of them. I thought the age gap and everything was intentional in Call Me By Your Name and disgusting and an effective literary device. Turns out all books by him are like that and he's just fucked up. Why is Andre Osman obsessed with people not showering? The tattoos! The tattoos! The timeline? It doesn't make sense. It was plopped on in there because honestly, Call Me By Your Name happens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then the book, have you read the book? No. Okay, well, it goes on way past the movie does. Yeah. To when they're old, old. I do know this thing. So why the fuck is this book in the middle of that, dad's still alive, when the dad dies at the end of the book, and that's the whole thing, and their meeting makes no fucking sense in the timeline of the book. Asaman loves the line, you know what I mean. No one knows what you mean! <laughs> Let them see. They weren't big, but they were firm. The power difference, how codependent they became in no seconds, the way Sammy acknowledged that a girl half his age was every man's dream. Why haven't you gone after him even though he's married? Why this man saying Ellie reminds him of his son because they're the same age when they're on a date? No one uses the word seldom. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> I seldom. Use yes! That. Seldom. Every fucking five times a page. <laughs> Trying to erase the years between you with piano. Why don't you just find oh. someone closer to your age? Why is this man's dad giving him money for a hooker when he's 14? Oh, what? The child was like our child. It was Elio's fucking like half brother, like his dad and this woman who is his age, their kid, Elio and Oliver. Like it's like our kid. <laughs> no. Anyway, so your next book, please enlighten uh, us. It's about to be a double whammy. No. It ends with us. Ah! <laughs> I still haven't read it, and I don't think I'm actually going to. Bye. Colleen Hoover, I gave it one star because again, you Genius. can't give can't zero give stars because I would give it zero stars. Fun fact, I actually bought two copies of this book. Whoa. One for myself. Oh, you <laughs> get it. And one with your auntie! You met your auntie! One one on my aunt. Soft porn <laughs> with your aunt! I trusted the book talk alleys and I will never be doing that again no. because it was the most horrific experience of my life. I gave it to her as a birthday present. Here are my problems because I was not going to divulge the insanely problematic because if you read that book and you did not see it, please get some reading comprehension. Get some help. The main character is called Lily Blossom Bloom and she works in a flower shop. Same girl has a weird parasocial relationship with Ellen DeGeneres. Same chick <laughs> names her kid Dory because Just Keep Swimming is her life mantra. No, fiction has gone out of hand. <laughs> Neither of the love interests should be romanticised. Mm. One was, I don't know, abusive and Atlas was just giving nothing. I understand the message Coho was trying to convey. It'd be impossible to miss with how on the nose, nuance lacking and just plain blunt it was. And while generational trauma and cycles of harmful behaviours are important to talk about, the execution of it in this book was shit. Actually, have red shopping lists better written than this. I've seen so many book stands dedicated to her. It simultaneously gives me hope and fills me with rage. Could write entire essays on why we should stop putting white mediocrity on a pedestal in the publishing industry and reference Coho repeatedly, but I won't open that can of worms. Remembering that I buddy read this with my auntie will haunt me forever. Okay, I'm changing the notes and the tones and the vibes with a five star rate. Yay! Upgrade! Deep of, deep of breath there. <laughs> I read The House of the Cerulean Sea Yay! by TJ Klune. And I'm a TJ Klune fan. Honestly, top yeah. authors, I think. Because every book that he writes has a message that is so important and it is made so thoroughly accessible for all ages. Like, it's wonderful. And his writing is so beautiful and it's just so whimsical and it felt like diving into childhood, but a love love loving that. one. There was love in my childhood. <laughs> my childhood had love. I just mean, like... Anyway, so um, the synopsis is these, like, monsters that they're kids and they get put in orphanages. And there's this guy and he works for this company that's basically, like, they have to do wellness reports on these kids. But none of them ever get adopted. So he's going there and he's all, like, sceptical of them. And then they end up being 
you know, he gets to know them yeah. and shit. And it's just, like, amazing story about, like, love, friendship, family, the romance is fucked cute, standing up for what is right and, like, like not indulging in ignorance and complacency, like, putting the hard work in to yeah. be good. Anyway, fucking loved it. It was adorable. I want all of the characters. I think there's a sequel happening. I'm pretty sure there is. is Have there you read this book? Um, It is on my autumn TBR for this year. It's very autumn vibes, it'll be yeah. slay. It's so say, fun. Because I was going to read it in the middle of summer, and I was like, no, this is a cozy read. It's such tell. a cozy read. Yeah. I love it. The next book that I read was Good Girl, Bad Blood. So the second A Good Girl's Guide to Murder yeah. book. Um, five stars, and my only review is Oh My Effing God. And you know what? So true. You can't say the synopsis without spoilers. Oh, really? Like, it's basically like a new mystery Ooh. with the same like lead characters, except it goes wonky. My heart was broken. The plot twist got me in the gut. Like I was Ooh. crying. Um, Why a plot twist with tears? But on like you. it was. It had a really dark turn that I did not expect. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh. Anyway, it was, it was you at the end and confession time, I haven't read the third book just because I'm so terrified <gasps> because of this second book. I will read it this year. I will but... also read them all this year. So do you And want then we can buddy read it? the third, third one. Book? Yeah, because yeah. I kind of need some easy reads to get to my fucking yeah. 40 goal. It's like speedy. It was a speedy read. Tears, but five stars. My next book is also a five star read. <laughs> Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. My favourite author. I'm in love. This is the first <laughs> book by him I read. I have now read all of his books. Oh my god. I can't even synopsize it. All you mentioned. Uh, no, that was the other one actually. That oh. was the Irish Lepers. Okay. It's coming. Boy, childhood. Brotherhood. Magical realism. But actually just trauma. Oh. Little family drug addiction. Found out. Slight retelling of his childhood. But love. If good men. If bad. If good if men are good <laughs> men, if they do bad things, the real question. What? Adventure, learning, life, becoming a writer, romance, the mystery of a fucking lifetime, the fucking suspense on this novel. Australian literature at its finest. The Australian coming of age. This is just, mm, it fed me. <laughs> it has a part of my soul. I use it for my English comparative. I was going to say, they sort of gobbled this up. They didn't. They didn't enjoy it. Oh, it's okay that it didn't enjoy it right now. Yeah, fuck's <laughs> I can't describe it, but everyone needs to read it. Like, every Australian needs to read this fucking book. Mm. It is groundbreaking in what it tries to do and how it does it. Like, it is five whole stars. I read Fire the Night by Bridget Kemmer. Ooh. I gave it three stars. Ooh. I vaguely remember this. It was, again, like, a bit of a Robin Hood retelling, but, like, in a mm. kingdom. Um, and there's, like, a plague going around. Wow, a pandemic. Ooh. Um, and this girl knows how to make the potion to cure it. Oh, well... You notice so much later than me. Spot over the REA. Old man in Lycra. Babes. You can leave off her bike. Sorry. <laughs> There's a pandemic. Mm, um, there is one. Of yes. Those, in fact. It's like a semi cure. It's like a. It's like the ibuprofen instead of the <laughs> instead of the vaccine, you know. But like the thing is, the 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 resources for this are like within the castle. They have to like grapple hook every night and like steal from the steal from the palace. And there's like secret identities. There's masks. There's like Ooh. morally gray princes. And it was like it was Love enemies it to lovers, prince. but it wasn't really. It, it was like fantasy enemies to lovers. So they don't actually hate each other, but they have to hate each other. Uh, <laughs> it was a good time. I read Tender as the Flesh. It is an apocalyptic world where animals have all got a disease so they can't be eaten and they are farming humans for meat. So I gave it two stars because the concept is amazing. The descriptions were amazing. It made me feel disgusting. There was no plot. The Only the premise was explored. Nothing else was explored. There was some weird rapey sex scene that didn't need to be there because the whole family thing made sense. It was like he tried to have a family with one of the meat humans kind of made sense it was like mental illness and all of this other shit and like humanity and whatever but the weird rapey sex scene didn't make sense and also the weird escaping the dog scene didn't make sense so i don't know it was just didn't it didn't hit for me this vicious grace by emily theed i'm gonna go with theed i was so close to accidentally saying theed and i would have Thneed. cried i gave it 4.5 stars because it did just reignite my little love for fantasy because at this point i hadn't read a book for months so not only did it rip me out of a reading slump I love it those. also jumped me back into fantasy so we loved that it felt like summer in a book but specifically it felt like mediterranean summer in a book with a little bit of like 
history, but like not real history, but it felt historical. There is this girl, I forgot her name. I should know her name. But our main character is raised as the last Finestra and basically she's there to slay the demons that will eventually come and end their island. It's because like there's a little island and they don't have a little defense barrier for it. So she's like, hashtag powerful. And so I can kill these demons. But you know what I need to do for that? I need to find my hashtag significant other who is compatible with my powers so that we can like hashtag kill the demons together so because true. like but the point is that like she's the moment and this man's just like there to give her like power and shit he's like he's like a little battery basically is the point you have to be married to them before you know if your powers work or not and if they don't work the man dies so okay, she's been through like several husbands at this point <laughs> They will just drop down. Her trying to find someone who is compatible while also political intrigue. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. So obviously co-written by the two people that are Christina Lauren. I gave it three stars. Romance book told currently and then flashbacks to the past. So you piece together what happened to make sense of where they ended up now. I was so excited for this book. The flashbacks, mm, I was like, wow, this is written so wonderfully. This is amazing. This is so smart. And it did not hit at all like the plot twist wasn't really a plot twist they had sex on a forest floor that's never hitting <laughs> uh, miscommunication trope but like enhanced and i didn't enjoy it that much but i gave it three stars because i did think it was decent last night at the telegraph club by melinda lowe Ooh. like sapphic novel and it was very historically accurate and i really enjoyed the little immigrant perspectives it was this girl i don't remember her name do you want to be louder it's like one of those Make more noise. It is, but like large. She felt like restricted and embarrassed by her culture. Opening up to her sexuality and also acceptance of her culture in the same narrative, which I think is really fucking cool. I gave it three stars. It was really enjoyable while I was reading it, but there was nothing really special about it. The romance felt a bit to me like, oh, you're the only other queer person available. Oh. Men, you know? Accurate to the times, yeah. but it just didn't do it for my heart. These Twisted Bonds by oh. Lexi Ryan. It is the second These Hollow Vows books. Look, it was already very blatantly Akatar inspired. I could not take it seriously. I gave it two stars. It was enjoyably bad. Like, it was entertainingly bad. Because I was just laughing at it the whole time. Okay, good. And it is a sequel, so I can't really do, like, a synopsis. Dear ha Fahrenheit 451, love and heartbreak in the stacks. So this was a librarian who wrote love letters to books. Aww. Yeah, so it was, like, really cute. And it was, her, it, it was hilarious. I loved her narration. <laughs> it went off. I didn't know any of the books, so it would have hit more if I did. Got some book recs, though. Gave it three stars. It was a fun time. The princess saves herself in this one. But it was, mm. I'm 14, this is deep TM. It was poetry but it was shit honestly this was someone's like real story and it was really emotional for them slow very good some people would love this 11 year olds would love it right <laughs> i gave it two stars i was just kind of like okay it felt like mm -hmm. that one song by taylor swift is on all the time right now yeah the, the lyrics yeah. that's what this felt like juniper and thorn by ava <laughs> reed you yeah. were witnessing me I reading know. this i gave it four stars this book has never made me feel more icky and grossed out in my life but that was its intent and it was so incredibly and carefully well done i can't give it anything less mm. you know jump it down from five stars because a little bit of the middle dragged a bit and also because the romance was very insta lovey i can see how that could also be a point of the narrative i wanted a bit more they met each other twice it could have just been like they needed to find an escape and they were yeah, but then other, it wouldn't but have then been it was, Yeah, night. yeah. Ava Reed's prose get me every time. Very folklore. It was very fairy tale -y. This book made me feel like the Saturn devouring his son painting. It's going to be on the screen. <laughs> um, I think it's a very important story to be told, and I'm glad that space was made for this book in the pub industry. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe, oh. and I gave this book three stars. I'm going to speed run it with the sequel. Yeah. I love the way it was written. Couldn't get more than three stars for me because I was like, one, the romance came out of nowhere in the ending. Two, I think I'm a bit sick of sad, tragic coming about coming about stories. Coming, coming out, out coming of age stories. Coming <laughs> of out stories. Oh, we get it, homophobia. You know? Mm. Gays be happy. Let the gays be happy. <laughs> However, Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world. 4.5 stars. Ooh. It would not have been that good without the original, obviously, yeah. like you needed it. But oh my God, was this book good. It dealt with so much shit. It went from like, they needed to do the coming out to set it up, but like mm. then it dealt with like the actual 
entering the world yeah. vibes and them together and their communication amazing and beautiful and I gobbled it all and the ending was uh, it made me cry I love how so many of the books you read last year are on my TBR for this year really? I read The Inheritance Games and I read The Hawthorne, Le- Hawthorne Legacy and again I read this in like one sitting like I read Whoa. The Inheritance Games put it down picked up the next one immediately <laughs> Jesus, you're crazy. You're um, The Inheritance Games, I gave 4.5, and then The Hawthorne Legacy, I gave four stars. Inheritance Games was like wonderfully done in terms of like setting up a series. And also, I love really fast chapters. This girl named Avery is hashtag poor in a not great situation. And then she gets called over to a mansion in the middle of Texas. And they read. Texas? Why Texas? That's my question, all right? And then she's like in this mansion and they're reading out the will of this dead billionaire guy. And guess his name? The sole inheritor of billions, Avery. And you know what the real inheritance is? Red shit. (laughs) The four hot grandsons left behind. It was worse than I was going for. It was like Knives Out, but very YA. I haven't read the third one yet because, again, I'm too scared to read the third. The second one is The Hawthorne Legacy. I gave it four stars because a good book and it was well done, but it was like a second book slump, extended filler and set up for the third book. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. One of Keisha's all-time favourite books. Here we go. I think this explains a lot about us and what we like reading because I gave it a grand total of three flat stars. Do you know what, fair? Thanks, I'm glad you get this. I enjoyed my time, but fuck it was long. And fuck (laughs) nothing happened. I have, like, no thoughts on it. Like, there was nothing grand about this book and there was nothing (laughs) bad, really, about this book. On that I note. feel like, on that <laughs> note, oh, you have to be a very specific type of person yeah. to enjoy Addie Laurie. You have to be a little bit of a pretentious bitch. I feel like you have to have the crippling fear of being forgotten and not doing anything with your life to enjoy this book. Because like, I had I a great that. time. And I didn't have a great Fair. time. Fair. Fair. And I love a good book with no plot. No, I think mm. that's what got me is because there was no plot, but she had no personality. At all. Fair. And none of the Fair. people she interacted with had a personality. Like, if there was a character Fair. arc, I'd vibe. But there wasn't. There was nothing. There was no characters. The only thing was good mm. writing. There was no plot, no characters. So I was like, eh, what am I here for? Mm. Synopsis is people can't remember Addie LaRue. Yeah. And she lives forever. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Okay. I read Blood and Moonlight by Erin Beatty. This is another one I kind of just picked up because the cover was pretty. So, Unexpected Slay, I gave it 3.5 stars. Will I read the next one? Yes. A murder mystery, but like fantasy in like a Notre Dame esque setting. Ooh. Yeah, it was like really funky. The magic was so underdeveloped, and I had no idea what was going on with that. So, and like it was intrinsic to the plot. Yeah. Like, if you got rid of it, it wouldn't take away from the plot, you know? Oh, that's just annoying. Right? So I was like, just just leave the spit out. It talked about, like, a lot of the historically overlooked crimes committed against women of lower socioeconomic class in a way that is very accessible and, like, would, I guess, push you to look more into it. Our main girl is a bit of a pushover. Like, she had no personality and she had no real vibes until the end the next book i read because we're speed running is some of it was real by nan fisher i gave it four stars i think you I've might enjoy this. this book there is this i was gonna say psychiatrist she is not a psychiatrist she is a psychic <laughs> very, very different. different things she has no memories of like her childhood because of what is thought to be severe trauma but she's kind of just like you know what don't want to know and so she does do psychic things she has like these shows um but then there is also a news reporter who's about to get lose his job tuesdays with mari by mitch album and i gave this book four stars i loved this book it was really beautiful this guy and his old professor had ms and he went and visited him every tuesday and it was like the little class of life lessons so it was him you know personal recount of his life kind of but then also all of the Tuesdays with Maury. I read it. You do. The Ballad of Never After, which is the second book for Once Upon a Broken Heart. And see, I immediately bought this when it came out. I, I read it in like the in like two days. Wow. I got to the end. The end with the plot twist after plot twist and like the most horrendous ending I've ever read, but like horrendous in a good way, like in the best way. But mind you, we, everyone and their mother thought that this was a duology, like a spin-off duology. And I was like... Oh, is that the ending? Because it could make sense. 
And so it was me in the middle at 8am in a politics class, finishing this book, throwing my book across the room and then having to pace. So oh. anyone who had to be in that classroom, I apologise. I gave it a 4.5. Wow, yeah. Um, and thank goodness it is actually not a duology and we are getting another book. This recording's been for an hour. <laughs> Next I read Tales from the Loop, which we discussed in English, and I was like, this is such a cool concept. It's not the picture, like, yeah, the it was like a picture book. The art was so mm. cool, and it was someone creating stories based on the art. The whole general concept was cool. I gave it three stars because the concept was cool, and it was... But it didn't really do much, and the stories were intertwined, so I was kind of like, what the fuck? Really These really Violent good. Delights by Chloe Gong. Five stars. It is magnificent and i genuinely believe my friend proved me wrong but i genuinely believe that anyone who likes any genre of book will like this book she, she proved you wrong and i was like what do you mean it has everything so enemies true. to lovers there's angst there's violence there's gangs it's childhood there's lovers childhood to lovers, to to lovers, to lovers to enemies to lovers to enemies again. to lovers again history woven in so well it is the characters iconic the plot iconic magical realism done so well everything is paced beautifully the plot is like genius it's not a perfect book but as a reader it is yeah. I like know. i i know cried i was shocked i was hurt I saw her screenshots. yeah i felt things i do think that these violent delights is the epitome of what the YA magical realism fantasy genre should be. It's what it's everything else is trying to be. Nothing I agree. Like no, nothing will live up. Chloe Gong, we My are your idol, biggest. Fans. I want to say like you're a like, genius. F- even like ten seconds in that woman's brain. Right, I need to stop talking, otherwise we could. Go yeah, on. we'll actually go on for hours. <laughs> Next up, don't go on for too long. No, it's not even loading. It knows. <laughs> I read Babel. But I'm going, I need to brace myself. I rated it five stars, but it deserves every single star ever. I genuinely believe that it is the best book I've ever read. Everyone should read Babel. And that's not just because like, oh my God, I love it. No, it is such an important story. And if you are interested in history, in politics, in like academics, or even in just like how we got to today's political scene in terms of like imperialism and colonization and like just general racism read babel it is a hefty read but it's such an important one it is about a boy named robin who as a child was in canton in china and there was like an illness that swept through canton and then this like professor guy from oxford comes in and is like i can save you just come with me so he gets like ripped away from his homeland, plunked in the middle of England um, with no family, nothing. And then he's basically raised to be a cog in the Babel Institute of Translation because he is a native speaker of China and like can speak Mandarin and it's like his mother tongue. They thought that that was really valuable and basically this entire college just steals young children from all over the world to use. Um, And it is about the downfall of Babel and everything that came with that. She ripped thoughts that I've been trying literally my whole life to try and articulate to people. And she just like did it in such a way that I was just like, it was on the page and it was devastating, but it was beautiful. And I, it was like therapy, but also I was ripped to shreds and I was died. Yeah, Probably. because of this. Because yeah. that's a really good. That was a really good ad. I think it's on my yeah. But think, the way that actually, I put yeah. more effort into my two thousand word Babel review than I did to any assignment I write this year. Yeah, this is how you I lose the time so. warp. Three and a half stars. I loved this book. I couldn't give it any more because I had no idea what was going on. It was like a time war, I guess, between blue and red, and it's through their letters deciphered in many ways to each other over time. I don't know what's going on. You're not supposed to know what's going on, but I know how I felt about what was going on, and halfway through, I got in the swing of how it was written, and it was a sleigh. It was fun. It was angsty. It was pretty. The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Three stars. It was women written by men. My favorite. Yeah, look, I it was good, I guess. Average, but nothing profound. Our Violin Ends by Chloe Gong. 4.5 stars. Um, probably objectively structured better than TVD. I don't think I will ever recover from the OVE epilogue ever. I think that is generally the best written epilogue in literature. I'm going to speed around the next 
three actually a far wilder magic by alison saft five stars incredible i read this in october which like you know it should be summer here you know it should be warm no it was raining it was storming so it was still a cozy read so i would sure, recommend yeah. this as a cozy read uh, it's got alchemy it's got a fox hunt it's got discussions about xenophobia and just like Slay. immigration policy and how we as a society like view that and demonize that in ways so far beyond what we would generally think but it was very very well done it felt like a warm hug that taught you something Aww. i'm being succinct next i read violet made of thorns by gina chen i gave it 3.5 stars it was your stock standard enemies to lovers it like it fixed the craving it didn't do much for me i understood what it was trying to do but girl was just too much not like other girls for me <laughs> brought me back to a time where i would voraciously read ya fantasy so i appreciate it for the nostalgia but yeah um and then i we read the atlas six by olivia blake love the atlas six hot people magic competitions angst what more do you need my battery is gonna go i read the thursday murder club by richard osman i didn't get it i gave it three stars it, it didn't hit for me i don't know why people love it it was confusing the characters were good i guess the mystery was good i guess there were twists and turns mm. but like fuck was it confusing the chapters <laughs> made no sense worst structured book i know under the whispering door by tj clune Another TJ Clune slay. Is this a sequel? Or is this like no, completely, completely different. This little tea shop where you go when you die, when you die and don't ascend straightly, straightly, straightly? straight <laughs> to the afterlife. And it's when you learn what you need to learn and you get a, 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 escorted through the door by the fairy man. Yep. Fairy man. The romance is fucking beautiful and the whole story was so much fun it was a warm hug i loved all the characters it was such an important messages profound life lessons i don't know how this man does it i loved this book i think it might have been a 4.5 yeah 4.5 then i read so this is ever after by ft lukens and it was extremely mediocre it was a fantasy perfect 17 year olds fighting wars and some bullshit. Oh, it's that, it's that cover one. Yeah. 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 But then after, it's like after they win. And then it's like, oh, what the fuck? And it's them trying to run a kingdom. I gave it three stars. It was fun. I read the whole thing in the bath one time. Little gay romance. Woo. Nothing special. Foul Lady Fortune <laughs> by Chloe Gunn. This book literally made me feral. Camera is on charge. Let's not drain my entire car battery. Let's go. <laughs> Foul Lady Fortune. Fortune. I gave it 4.5 stars. We buddy read this, except yeah. one of us was always behind. We, we took turns. We being took high. turns. We were never on time. Yeah. Um, I gave it five stars. Because like, I was like, we got to the point where it was like 80 pages left and I'm like, I can't wait for your cadence. I'm so I know, sorry. no, like you just, it gets to a point where you can't fucking stop. No, like you actually no. genuinely can't. I genuinely think that in terms of story and story structure, this was executed better than the TV, like these Van Delight's duology as a whole. Mm. So I'm really excited for the next one. Me but, too. Like, I'm so excited. Tropes done well. Like the fake dating trope done the, well. Done phenomenally. The crying. Love Rosalind. Yeah, literally. Why the fucking the, history woven and the in? the politics just like mesh Insane. into the stories of these characters. She's a lives. genius. I can't, I can't do it. I, I like actually wrote a 2000 word. <laughs> it was hefty. Both of ours are hefty. All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton. 4.5 stars. Sle Follows this girl who goes on this journey around Australia with this her friend who is a victim of domestic violence who is way older than her and she is an actor and they go on this journey to try and find Longcoat Bob who cursed her family. He didn't actually curse the family, but it's like this folk tale. It's happening during World War II and they pick up this little Japanese fighter plain guy and it's gorgeous it's so funny and it's so magical realism but it's so like heartbreakingly wonderful and his writing gets me every fucking time and i'm just obsessed with him so i need to go on a trent dalton binge you do need to the catcher in the rye by jd oh, salinger awesome. i gave it 1.5 stars such a good title for such a shit book i hate <laughs> yeah. it that man is so annoying and i know he's supposed to be but fuck did that book enable men of the 50s so fucked up so pointless Hated it. Next up, we read Light Luck by Alex oh, Astor. Dear. Oh, dear. I told myself that I wasn't allowed to have an opinion on this book until I actually read it. And I did. After months of hunting it down, I found it. Paid way too much money for it. Read it. Now I can have an opinion. I gave it two stars. So shockingly average that I wanted to give it zero stars. It was not a zero star written book, no. But it was so average. It was marketed as this, like, 
high stakes YA fantasy enemies to lovers like so much angst and like drama but it literally read like middle grade what am I reading I don't want to hate Alex Astor I just think she needs to get a better editorial and marketing team uh, maybe she is the marketing team maybe that's the that's issue cool. please 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 get better editors babe because it had potential and that's what shot me right off because it could have been it feel good like a first draft it literally felt like a first draft and it felt like the roughest first draft. The deep and meaningful shit was I'm 14 and I just learnt what layers in a story meant. Onions. One of the characters who's like the ruler of the Skyling realm is called Azul. No. Anyone who names things like that. Mm. Star Stick. I, that was a thing. That was like her little magic one was called Star Stick. No. Useless Magic, Lyrics and Poetry oh. by Florence Welch. I gave it three stars. It was fucking beautiful. I don't even know her music, so it didn't really make sense to me. The poetry slay, though. You don't listen to Florence and the Machine? Really good bedside book, really good coffee table book. It's fucking yeah. beautiful. Family of Lies by E. Lockhart. And I gave it 3.5 stars. Super lyrical. I think it added amazing layers to the generational trauma. Like, because it follows the parents of Cadence. Duh. In We Were Liars, it follows her mum, I think, and like they're the aunties, so they're siblings. So it made them make sense, which I think was really fucking cool. The story was amazing. It fit in with the whole family. It was vibes. I enjoyed myself the whole time. When I had Rona, I read all of Heartstopper and I gave it all 3.5 stars. So That's cute. Like, all of them, fun. Yeah. Nothing amazing. Mm -hmm. Adorable. Good. That's kind of it. The last book I read in 2022 was The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. Um, and I gave this 3.5 stars. It's like so lyrical and magical dark academia that it gave lyrical, magical, dark academia a run for its money. Um, it was absolutely all vibes, no plot. And you know what? Sometimes it hits. Kelly Andrew got away with it because the way she wrote it was absolutely just like gorgeous. But at the same time, because it was no plot, I had no clue what was going on ever. Like oh. the entire book. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I feel like I'm having a great time. The romance. Yeah. You can only get so many stars when you don't know the Exactly. Podcast. That was your last book. That was Congratulations. I read Alone With You and the Other by Olivia Blake. I gave it four straight stars. Thoroughly impressed by this book and what it tried to do. I think it can be extremely a lot for many humans. It wasn't a five star. I didn't shatter my soul. She's one of many humans. However, I was deeply moved. I enjoyed myself the whole time. It was beautiful and it was heartbreaking and it did a lot. And I really enjoyed myself you know how like like most books that i say are my favorite i don't care if you criticize them but with alone with you and the other if someone says they don't like it you don't like me and i can't but, take it no i kind of get it because it's like, like if it's made for you it's made for you if yeah, it's not it's not yeah it's all come back now by michaela saunders she was the editor it's like a collection of short, short stories by original writers it's speculative fiction so like dystopian oh. slays i tried to update my like do for every story didn't end up doing that three stars it was fun None of the stories got me, but also all of them made me think. And I think a really good read. On Goodreads. Sponsored, <laughs> if only. Then I read She Gets the Girl, follows this girl who is absolutely infatuated with this other girl. And she meets someone and they're like kind of enemies because the crush and the other girl called oh. Alex get along really well. Oh. And then Alex is like kind of bitchy to her at this party. And it's like, what the fuck? And then Alex is like, I need to prove to my girlfriend who thinks I'm emotionally unavailable. It's not my girlfriend right now, but I'm still calling her my girlfriend. Then I'm a good person. So how about I help you get with this crush that you have? Cocky af. But it's hilarious. So the whole thing is funny. <laughs> And then this girl ends up with her crush and is like, oh, Cora Myers is actually just someone I made up in my head. She's not even that slay. So it's kind of really cute. It was done really well. It was three stars. It was like, I needed a little, a little sapphic oh, moment. Yeah. The last book of the year oh. was The Midlight Library by Matt Haig. I gave this four stars. I don't know if it warrants four stars. You did have a bit I of a gush I did have a big gush it. about it. Maybe it is. I just haven't really thought about it. That's the yeah. thing. I don't know. Follows this girl who dies but doesn't really die. She's almost dead. And she gets the opportunity to go into the Midnight Library, which is you get to pick a book and pick a life that you could have had based on if you made different choices. And she gets to live them. And she would stay in it if she was ever truly happy with mine. So she goes through all these lives. The things she regretted she realised were out of her control and she couldn't regret because she lived out these other lives in which she did oh, things differently. Good. Which is a really fucking cool message about life. It like gave me a fiction fix. Oh, that's like it, good. Like it, that's it good. was fiction TM and I was like, mm, this was such a creative concept. I won't spoil the ending, but I ate Thank it you. up. And I, I expected nothing less. And that was all my book. Those are the books we read in 2022! I would actually froth doing monthly wrap-ups with you. Mm -hmm. 
<gasps> can we yeah, can we do like not. monthly wrap ups together? Um, what's your Goodreads reading goal for this year? This year, forty. But I think I can do it. I want to get some quick reads. I want to read yeah. a lot of the books that have been popular because I don't. I didn't really read like that was many popular me books last year, and this year is gonna be the complete opposite because I hated it. Like all of my books last year i feel like there were definitely some absolute bangers babel was in there mm. but also as a cohesive lot it was kind of mid because i just i want to have opinions on things like i haven't mm. read seven husbands of Eleven, Eleven Eleven Hugo. Hugo. like that's like a, a go-to yeah you know i want to do the ones that people actually say are good like you as a reliable source you know thank you we started for wrap up so you don't have to do this mm-hmm. bullshit for hours 